I have recent, uh, recently put uh, several puzzles together and discovered that currently scientists are able of creating a miniaturized computer measured in nanometers and implanted into our bodies through usual injections using a syringe needle and we will not even see this tiny device. Let's or let's put it into details for a layman or even for an engineer not versed in nanotechnologies. Simply speaking, a typical computing device usually consists of the central processing unit or memory cell, a power component, an interface or a set of comments a particular device is configured to process and of course uh, the base layer. First, the memory cell. In 2015, researchers at the RMIT announced that they had built the one of the world's first electronic multi-state memory cell which mirrors the brain's ability to simultaneously process and, process and, uh, and uh, store multiple strands uh, of information. Uh, the research builds are uh, on RMIT's previous uh, disc uh, previous uh, discovery where ultra fast nanoscale memories were developed using a functional oxide material in the form of an ultra thin film, ten times uh, thinner than a human hair. Second, the power component. A bit later, yet uh, a bit later, yet in 2018, Massachusetts Institute of Technology filed for a patent entitled so a solid state glucose powered microfuel cell. Uh, the design, uh, design of this uh, ceramic-based uh, glucose fuel cell consists of a proton, uh, of a proton conducting our uh, electrolytes, our uh, cereal, and porous platinum electrode films for the uh, for the conversion of glucose and oxygen, respectively. Uh, in the modeled uh, design, each glucose fuel cell was uh, 370 by 40 nanometers thin and measured uh, 300 micrometers by 300 micrometers, uh, micrometers in area. I'm sure, I'm sure they can even make these measurements tinier. What is interesting? Uh, the level of glucose concentration varies in different body fluids and the highest level is observed in blood. Low temperature proton conductors such as cereal are non-toxic and biocompatible. In addition, they are stable up to temperatures far in excess of, of 1000 uh, degrees Celsius. Uh, the proton conductivity of hydrated cereal uh, reach, uh, reaches uh, an optimal level at room temperature, which is sufficient to enable the operation of uh, energy conversion devices, uh, devices at body temperature. Third, the interface. They also managed to design, uh, to design a biologically prepared copper graphene nanohybrid as uh, the interface of microchips for sensitive detection of crop viruses. The hybrid consists of the typical graphene sheets embellished with copper nanoparticles of 10 to 15 nanometers to impart conducting and, uh, and metallic character. This, uh, this nanohybrid is applied to the active interface of microchips. 
therefore set aside the present modeled, uh, modeled embodiment of crop virus detection and conclude so that a programmable interface for nanocomputing device is also executable. Also, they have announced about a graphene or graphene based analytical lab on chip devices which are intake fluids and make it flow through their microchannels to achieve rapid or highly sensitive and low cost analysis with, uh, with, with uh, significant yields. Graphene has vast potential to be used in LOC devices owing to its remarkable and unique properties. Fourth, uh, the base layer. Single walled carbon nanotubes made from graphene, which I told you about in my previous video, exhibit bundling or driven by or by anti-tube bonding. This or anti-tube bonding can form bundles of hundreds or, or thousands of nanotubes that exhibit very different characteristics than our individual, individual carbon nanotubes. Therefore, I conclude that uh, this adhesion lying, lying at the core of carbon nanotubes uh, will make uh, the nanocells self-assemble when injected into a human body. Now let's recall uh, the measurements of conventional syringe needles used to deliver various drugs, uh, drugs including vaccines. Take a look at the screen. An inner diameter of most uh, syringe needles will suffice to let this tiny chip through. So I want to disappoint perhaps 90% of people are in their belief that, uh, that such tiny chips or other computers do not exist. And nobody knows whether they are being used for the good. Also, think how to deactivate such nanochips if they are found where they don't belong.